On today's Apple Daily, as expected, the American election gets in the way of all the news. So luckily, I asked you guys for some questions, so we're handing it over to you. MacBook Pros go on sale pricing to clear some stock. And in IK Vances, would the first gen Apple Silicon Macs be trusted? What is the estimated battery life for Apple Silicon Macs from the leaks? What will be the expected prices of Apple Silicon Macs? And seriously, I don't give a damn about colors. I want a 10-bit display with Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos speakers, Face ID, USB 4, cellular, gallium charger, braided cable, and dbrand can cover all our colorful wishes. That doesn't seem as much like a question. Also, we will be announcing our plans for the Apple Silicon event and some more big announcements for the channel. Plus, notification squad. This is the Apple Daily. I'm David for Living on iPad and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. If you want the latest Apple news, leaks and rumours every weekday at 12 UTC, like this video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell and let me know in the comments that you've done all those things so you can join my notification squad. So as mentioned on yesterday's show, we kind of expected to not have a great deal of news going on today, uh, not only with the election but also with the fact that we know we've got product announcements coming next week. It's always kind of a little bit quiet, there's not a great deal going on and then you'll get huge amounts of news all in one go, um, like the day before or maybe tomorrow, who knows? We will see what happens, but there we go. The only piece of news that actually kind of caught my eye today is there are a lot of sales on Apple gear at the moment, so um, you can get AirPods for $99 in a few places, I believe Amazon is one of those, um, and also up to $500 off MacBook Pros. So if you must have an Intel MacBook Pro, if you are gonna make use of uh, Boot Camp and stuff like that, probably a good time to pick one up if you want one. But for me, I'm 100% waiting for Apple Silicon for stuff. And we know now we don't have long to wait. So let's get straight into iCave answers. And following that, we will have our update of what's going on for the Apple Silicon event, plus some channel announcements. Exciting, isn't it? So first up, uh, Rudra Patel. Would the first gen Apple Silicon be trusted? So. This is a question I've had from quite a few people and I think we have addressed it in the past, but this is kind of, kind of going to be like an FAQ. This is the sort of stuff that people ask us all the time on the channel. So we might as well address it again uh, for the new people that have joined us who maybe haven't watched the whole back catalog because it's a news channel. And let's be honest, watching old news is kind of dull. Yes, I do think personally that uh, the first gen Apple Silicon can be trusted because in all honesty, it isn't first gen it is they've been doing it for 10 years they've been doing it since the original iphone these apple silicon chips the a series processors they started officially with a series with apple a4 which went into the original ipad and then into the iphone 4 even before that the early apple silicon chips did have uh, that went right back to the first iphones were using extra custom parts that no one else was using. Um, Apple doesn't make ARM chips. They they license the ARM instruction set um, to build their own chips around. And then they put all of the other stuff on there that they need. So nowadays they have a secure enclave to keep your biometric data. They have image signal processors. They have neural engines, machine learning cores. They have so much stuff going in there. They have hardware, video encoders, so much stuff that you don't even know about, you don't hear about. All anyone looks at is the kind of top line numbers of the compute score in Geekbench 5 and the metal score and the, um, you know, the single core and multi-core stuff. None of that really tells the story with Apple Silicon because it's not just an ARM processor and some RAM. It's That's not how it works at all. The way that it's set up for Apple Silicon is completely different. And this is what they've been doing for years in iPhones and iPads. Now, will there be some glitches? Will there be some software that doesn't work on day one as well as it should do? Yes, probably. However, this is not new technology for Apple. This is what they've been doing since the original iPhone came out. They share the APIs in a lot of cases between Mac OS and iOS and iPad OS and all of their other platforms. So yes, there will be some teething issues but I can't imagine there's going to be any issues in the hardware that is unsolvable in the first generation Apple Silicon. This is the reason that they're also not looking particularly at redesigning the Macs that they're going into because all they then need to concentrate on is bringing Apple Silicon to it and using it in a chassis in a MacBook that they already know has a track record for keyboard works, 
trackpad works, display works fine, all that sort of stuff. Rather than trying to change everything in one go, they're more than likely going to keep the original designs and bring over the horsepower in Apple Silicon. Hopefully that answers your question. Krishna Games asks, what is the expected battery life of Apple Silicon Max from leaks? Now, from the leaks that we've had, um, it's very difficult to tell. I mean, pretty much everyone has quoted the 15 to 20 hours of battery life, um, which has come out, but they've also quoted exactly the same battery life, regardless of whether we're talking about an A14 or an A14X, and regardless of whether they're talking about it going into a thin and light 12 inch MacBook, a MacBook Air, a MacBook Pro. So I don't know if these are particularly accurate. I think the idea is we're looking at between 50 and 100% increase on battery life that we have currently. Now, pretty much everything Apple quotes as being 10 hours. In reality, if you're doing anything taxing with a MacBook, it does uh, sap the battery life a little bit more. But then the chips that go into them are between 45 and 65 watts in a lot of cases. And uh, I believe they're looking at somewhere around 15 to 16 watts. Uh, of power draw for the chips in the new stuff. So you can do the maths, it's going to be a lot longer. Add to that, they don't generate as much heat. So even in fan equipped Macs, they're not going to be spinning up the fans as much. So they're not going to be running the motors, which means that they're not going to be sapping as much energy. So I think we can pretty confidently say battery life will be a big improvement, especially when you think of iPads, they tend to actually last as advertised for about 10 hours, whereas the Macs tend to be running under that. But the kind of people that are doing battery tests are also probably using their systems a lot more heavily than 90% of people out there. So in terms of battery life, I think we're just looking at a good improvement between 50 and 100% on what we have right now. Akshat Garg asks, what can be the expected price of Apple Silicon? Now, we've talked about this again uh, in the past. The first rumors really that came out after WWDC, we're talking about that 12 inch MacBook chassis, the, the thin and light version that they discontinued a couple of years ago that was using the Intel uh, mobile processors. And the thought there was that they would be around about 799 for students and 849 for the rest of us, which is a massive discount on what any MacBook has been for quite some time. I think when I first got my MacBook Air 11 inch, and this was way back in about 2011, I think we paid something around 850 for it, but then that was with education discount. So it would be great for Apple to be getting back down to that kind of price point. Um, as I mentioned, I think that the Mac, uh, the Mac minis, once they get to that point, will be the one that they really try and push the price down on, hopefully back down to that 499 that it used to be at, which would make all the sense in the world. And if I can get it below that, even better. Um, but I think pretty much everything is going to be looking at maybe 10% under what we used to be paying because they're not paying Intel for the chips anymore. I did notice that on the, the top end MacBook Pros, the 16 inch ones, I believe the processor itself has an RRP of like $550. So there's a good saving to be made by not using Intel's chips and using the more powerful Apple Silicon instead. And GB asks, seriously, I don't give a damn about colors. I want 10-bit display with Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos speakers, Face ID, USB 4, cellular, gallium charger, braided cable, and dbrand can cover our colorful wishes. Now, I don't know how serious he was about getting this answered on the show, but dude, you're getting it answered. Um, and I answered it in the uh, comments as well, but, Fine, if you don't care about the colours, that's cool. I want my product red, Mac. I think that's going to be pretty banging. Um, however, I want 10-bit colour with Dolby Vision. Cool. I'm pretty sure they're going to be doing that. Probably only on the MacBook Pros. That makes all the sense in the world to me because uh, with Dolby Vision, you are going to need to be able to edit the stuff that people can now shoot on their iPhones. And it would make huge sense for Apple to, as they announce the Apple Silicon stuff, to also say, and now you can edit that great footage on your notebook uh, with no problems. They do use it as a product demo because there have been so many YouTubers that already put out their content in 4K. I don't put out 4K, I'll be honest with you. I don't think you need to see this in any more detail than you're seeing right now. But there are so many YouTubers that have been trying to do the, uh, the HDR Dolby Vision stuff on their Macs and they are really struggling to be able to process it because of the amount of horsepower it needs. And it would be such a flex for Apple to come out and go, 
Sorry guys, I know you've been struggling. I know you've been struggling to edit the stuff that you've been shooting on your iPhones, but here you go. Here's a thin and light MacBook you can do it on uh, that costs less than the competitors, costs less than your old Intel MacBook. Um, it's almost like they've released the iPhone early so that everyone realizes quite how much power is required to edit this stuff so that after the event, everyone will be raving about, oh my God, did you see that product demonstration? how fast it was rendering, how fast it was editing and scrubbing through this Dolby Vision. What else would you like, my friend? Let's have a quick check back on your list. Dolby Atmos speakers, the HomePods have now had Atmos added for home theater support. So you can pair a couple of those to your MacBook and you can have full on Atmos. I don't think many people though need Atmos when they're editing on a computer. Um, wear some headphones, it'll be fine. And actually you might find that the AirPods Pro maybe do Atmos. Um, simulation when they're in your ears kind of using that spatial audio stuff that they've been talking about that's so cool. Face ID don't think that's going to be coming to the early MacBooks but we were talking about this in the comments actually earlier and if you haven't commented on our videos yet you might notice that every comment in our comment section down there I do answer so please do the only ones that I don't is if you are trying to spam uh, and then I'll just delete it but I'll pay attention to you but anyway yeah we were talking about Face ID the the cameras hopefully will improve in the Apple Silicon Max purely because they're gonna have that computational stuff that's all sitting there ready to work on it. To actually try and get Face ID into there, you're gonna need more depth to the display. It might be that they go slightly thicker on the top cases or Face ID is reserved for desktops that have got a bit more space, so the iMacs specifically. What if you could use your iPhone uh, using the U1 chips that will be in everything? to unlock your Mac using Face ID on your iPhone. So it kind of, as you open up your MacBook, it says unlock with Face ID, you pick up your phone and it unlocks it. The same way as your Apple Watch does when, uh, when you put that on your wrist, you can either tap it and put in your passcode or you can unlock your phone with Face ID right next to it and it will work. So that could be a way that they get around it. Um, Otherwise, uh, they might look at putting the Face ID sensors maybe built into a touch bar so they, they fire out at a lower angle because as long as you're kind of sitting at vaguely the same angle when you unlock it as when you set it up, that should work just fine. Cellular, yep, we've already discussed this. I think 5G will be coming to the new MacBooks. It makes all the sense in the world. And also, one of the things that Apple's done in the recent past is bought Intel's modem business. So I think... Uh, although at the moment they're using Qualcomm modems for the iPhones, I think uh, within a year or so they will probably be producing their own 5G modems and doing it all themselves. Gallium charger. Now this is a thing that I think is an Anchor and a few of the other companies that do kind of third party chargers um, have been making. They basically allow you to do a much smaller charger brick, uh, which is great. I mean, is it going to be a deciding factor on whether you buy one or not? Um, if it is, cool by a third party one um, but I'm sure Apple will come to it at some point I don't think it's the priority right now but that's fair enough uh, braided cable again with your gallium charger you can use whatever cable you want I don't mind um, and dbrand can do our colorful wishes well I've never used dbrand stuff I have got some stuff coming uh, skins wise from a UK company called extreme skins I believe they're called um, so I started off with getting a skin for this Apple Pencil. As soon as it arrives, I will do a video of putting that onto my Apple Pencil because it just makes it look like a normal pencil and that novelty is fun for me. And beyond that, I think they've said they're going to send me some other stuff that we can look at for the channel. It's not a sponsorship as such, but they've just said they'll send some other stuff out for me, which is really kind of them. So uh, I do kind of like the idea of skinning stuff rather than putting cases on everything. Um, but if you haven't checked it out yet, ESR uh, iPad case review is also live on the channel feel free to check it out but as i say i do want to see colors come back to the mac i think if we could get the colors that came in the original apple uh, rainbow logo that would be super cool um i did do a little animation of it that i put onto instagram it's probably somewhere and if i can find it i will chuck it up on the screen somewhere up there um but i just think these are some cool things that will happen if you guys have any more questions because you know, we're going to answer as many questions as we can over the next few days, then do let me know in the comments. Use the hashtag iCaveAnswers so that I can find the ones that you want me to answer on the show. On to Notification Squad. No difficult names for me today compared to yesterday. Um, so we've got uh, Pad Ali's, we've got Shane, 
Aben Binu and Marius hashtag eighteen four nine nine. Um, I don't know if that's a price or his uh, color code um, for Photoshop. Thank you all for joining the notification squad. Really appreciate you guys. And if you want to join too, remember all you do is subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, and let me know in the comments that you did those things. Even if you just put hashtag notification squad, I will understand what that means. Uh, so a couple of little announcements. Branding is changing on the channel. I've mentioned this a couple of times already on the channel. Living on iPad doesn't really cover what we talk about on the show. I started or originally living on iPad as a WordPress blog during lockdown and the whole idea was trying to do everything on iPad instead of using my Mac and stuff. But it turns out I love my Mac. Um, I really love my iPad as well and especially now I've got the iPad Air. Really, really love it. But um, I'm a Mac guy. The channel name is going to change. We're going to use the iCave branding that we've been using for iCave Answers for all this time, so it makes all the sense in the world. The branding is going to change over the weekend. All the different social platforms will change as well. I don't know if all the handles will change because I don't know if I can do that, but anything that I can, I will. Um, the channel link for Living on iPad will stay as Living on iPad because I can't change that, I don't think, at any point. Um, but the brand, uh, like the channel name will change. The logo is going to be updated. It's not changing a great deal, um, but there's some little tweaks to it. But yeah, I just want to have it all kind of in place before the Apple Silicon event on Tuesday. I want the channel to make sense for what we actually talk about and not have people kind of coming in and thinking we're only talking about iPads and leaving again. So that's where we're at. That's what I'm going to do. If you have anything, any thoughts on it, please let me know in the comments. For the Apple Silicon event, we are going to be doing a live stream. We're going to be doing it immediately after the event. So we will not be trying to restream the event because Apple don't like that, not one bit. We will, uh, I will be on Twitter throughout the day on Tuesday. And then because I'm now furloughed from work again, so I've got all the time in the world to do this stuff. Um, so I'll be on Twitter during the day on Tuesday. Then once the Apple event comes on, I'll probably still be on Twitter a little bit, but I'll be taking a lot of notes and grabbing as many images and stuff as I can to use in the live stream. Once the Apple event wraps up, we will uh, go onto a YouTube live stream. We'll run it as normal. You can ask me questions in the chat. Uh, I will answer them as best I can. Uh, we will all have probably the same amount of information at that point, uh, but I might have a little bit more insight just from the fact that I look at this stuff all the time. Um, but if not, we'll work through it together. That's kind of the fun of this community. One other thing that we are looking at putting together uh, as part of the rebrand is I am going to set up a Discord server, I think. Um, I'm going to try. I don't know how to do it. I've never done it before, but we're going to give that a try. Uh, so we can have a space for the community to kind of chat together. And hopefully if you guys have got any ideas for videos that you want me to make, stuff that you want me to review, if you end up buying a really cool case, you can send a link um, so that we can all have a look at it and I can potentially get one to review as well. But that's what we're doing. Thank you so much for being a part of the community. Thank you so much. Rest in peace, living on iPad, and long live iCave from next week. See you tomorrow morning.